Uh, for more on where uh, this political battle goes in this recovery, we want to bring on our next guest kicking us off today, Lonnie Chen, Hoover Institution Fellow and former Mitt Romney 2012 Policy Advisor. Lonnie, good to be chatting with you again here. Uh, I mean, the popularity of this relief package, I think, is worth stressing. A Pew Research poll pointed out that it had about 70 percent of Americans favoring it. So it's a tricky spot for Republicans, I think, to be in to say that this is bad. Uh, what's your reaction to the way they held strong against the Democrats uh, in the House and, and maybe where they go from here, since it is uh, a lot of money flowing to Americans right now? Yeah, no, no question that uh, there is a, an element of this policy that will be very popular. In fact, I think several elements of it will be very popular. Uh, I think at the end of the day, though, Republicans made the proper policy argument here. And, and this is going to be the challenge is can they get out there and have a counter message that basically says, look, the actual amount of COVID relief, the actual amount, for example, you saw Chuck Schumer referring to this notion of getting more vaccines in arms. That's a very, very small amount of this package. It's less than 10 percent of the total that's really being devoted to those kinds of things. Is that the kind of message that Republicans can get out there uh, and, and send regarding this package? That essentially the amount of, of, of COVID-related benefits, the amount of COVID-related relief here is a relatively small piece of the whole. Uh, you know, I think that's a challenging message. There's no question about it. But it's a message that they've decided they want to stick with. They believe that they've got a long-term pathway here to make the argument that this was essentially a bunch of unnecessary spending on progressive policy priorities. You heard Mitch McConnell say that. The efficacy of that, you know, we'll know with time. We'll see whether that argument is compelling or not. But in the short run, it certainly seems, Zach, like it is a large hill to climb. Lonnie, one of the areas uh, that surprisingly didn't attract as much Republican opposition is this extension of the child tax credit. And we've heard Senator Romney certainly argue for something even more significant than what we have right now. Democratic lawmakers have indicated they want to push to make this a, a permanent credit. Um, how much support do you think there is from Republicans? And how do you think they calculate this particular part of the bill? Because it does seem like there is some agreement on both sides. Yeah. And, and that's the interesting thing here, Akiko, is that there are parts of this bill that I think would have garnered some bipartisan support. Uh, certainly the, the part about direct sort of funding to help with the vaccine distribution acquisition of PPE, et cetera. And then this child tax credit piece is really interesting because you did have a number of Republicans coming out calling for an expanded child tax credit to support family and child rearing during uh, these challenging times around the pandemic. And then, of course, you noted Senator Romney, he actually called for a broader overhaul even of the entire system relating to uh, assistance for, for families and for those with kids. So there, there was the possibility that this piece could have garnered bipartisan support. I think the challenge though is now that you've had such a partisan battle over this $1.9 trillion package, I'd argue in some ways you've poisoned the well in terms of being able to come together on areas of public policy where there may have been agreement, like for example, expanding tax benefits uh, for those with families uh, and, and, and kids. So I think that is, uh, that's a challenge we're gonna have to see again we're only going to know as this plays out over time. But my sense looking at it now is that Republicans are going to be really loath to try to come together with Democrats, even in areas where potentially there may have been agreement. I think that's a very good point. And I think it's especially uh, something that a lot of cannabis investors out there have noticed, uh, thinking about how many moderates would need to come along for any changes on that front. Uh, but when you think about it, it does sound like Democrats are really banking on the financial impacts being remembered for a long time, right? Thinking that uh, Americans that might need that stimulus check that was promised, uh, really capitalizing on that and hoping that it pays dividends later on in the next election cycle. But Lonnie, I mean, when you look at kind of where we're at in this recovery, there is a lot of, of truth out there that we might need some sort of uh, relief for the, for the hardest in Americans. We got unemployment claims earlier today showing that it dropped to a four month low, but the number coming in at 712,000 claims uh, down from or underneath expect expectations of 725,000. But when you look at that and kind of gauge where we're at in the recovery versus what passed, I mean, uh, it's tough to look at it and say that it wasn't necessary, right? Well, I, I think you have to ask the question, could the policy have been more targeted? You know, one of the things we know about this, uh, this pandemic and the period of time since the initial, you know, we, we've now been in this for a year, the period of time since the initial declaration of pandemic, 
what you see is a real kind of bifurcation in the American economy, right? Some Americans have done just fine, in fact, have prospered during this time, and other Americans have been very hard hit economically. Uh, there have been a, there's been a fraying of the social fabric. There have been mental health issues that have come up as a result. And so the question is, was this relief package really targeted to those Americans who needed it? And I think part of the Republican argument going forward is going to be, look, you could have taken a fraction of the money, targeted it more specifically at those who really needed the help and ended up with a much smaller package that was much more directed, that was much more focused. And I think that that's going to be, again, I think that's going to be the issue going forward, which is, yes, there's no question that some more assistance probably was needed. But you have to remember, this comes on top of $4 trillion of assistance last year. And so really, I do think this could have been a much more targeted formulation, and in that sense, a much more effective one that could have garnered some bipartisan support. So Lonnie, I guess the question is, where does this leave the other legislative priorities? You said the, the partisan manner with which, the partisan way in which this passed poisoned the well. Uh, what about issues like infrastructure now? Because that's something that both parties have said they can come together on. Uh, that's another big bill that could be on the table here. Does that derail priorities like that? I think the devil will be in the details, of Kiko, on, on infrastructure. I think there's always the potential when you're talking about coming together, spending money in members of Congress's districts to repair roads and bridges and, and, and increase our capacity, for example, uh, to transport goods and transport people. Those are all things people like. But when you talk about how is that spending going to happen, where will that spending be? Is that spending going to be, quote, paid for? Those are the tough questions. And I think if the answer is that they're going to do a $4 trillion package of spending where there's no pay-fors and it's just a bonanza and a blitz of money going out in, 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 into America, I think that will be challenging, again, for Democrats to do. I think the only way they're able to bring Republicans along is if they work together with them from day one to try to craft a package where there can be bipartisan agreement. Because infrastructure is one of those areas where the potential has always existed and where I think you could potentially see something much later this year. Okay, we'll be watching that. Lonnie, always good to get your insight. Lonnie Chen, Hoover Institution Fellow and former Mitt Romney Policy Advisor.